there were some great comparisons of uh, running form on uh, recent NBC broadcast of the uh, Kona Ironman. Um, and I think there was really none better than this um, comparison when we saw Craig Alexander um, passing Chris Lieto on the run at just beyond mile 21 in the race. And certainly, you know, everyone knows Craig's an amazing Ironman runner, half Ironman runner. Uh, there's some really interesting things to look at here uh, in regards to their form. Now, you know, they made a, a quip that, that no one would confuse uh, Chris Lieto with a runner. Well, I think that's a, you know, I'm tired of hearing that kind of stuff. Um, he put in a pretty amazing performance here uh, in that race, and uh, if he wasn't running well, he never would have finished where he did. Uh, so, you know, we should all be as good a runner as, uh, or I should say as bad a runner, right, as uh, Chris is. But I think there are some, some clear distinctions, and, and surely Chris was, uh, at this point, was uh, hurting a good bit. Um, but, you know, this frame right here, uh, I think, really gives you a lot of information um, on you know, what is the difference between fantastic run form and um, you know, run form that's not quite as good and is starting to break down a little bit. And since uh, both both runners here are, um, are near the, the uh, toe-off phase, we can see a, a big difference in their posture here. Um, what we see with Craig is a classic example of um, what I've been calling the, the power arc in running here, uh, that we see a, um, a really smooth, powerful looking unbroken arc uh, at toe off through his um, whole body. And we see essentially uh, the region from his core to his chest are, are leading, uh, leading his, um, his body forward down the road. Um, if we look at Chris here, and I think I'm going to change the color on these lines so we can see them better. So now we've got these lines in red. I think it's a little clearer. Um, you can see that, that there's... Chris has uh, more <clears throat> of a forward lean here at the waist. Uh, he, you know, compared to Craig here, who's absolutely perfect, um, there, there's a clear difference. That's not to say that, uh, that you or I wouldn't be uh, quite happy uh, with if we had Chris's run form uh, 21 miles into the Kona Ironman. Um, but um, in the position, in this power arc position that we see, Craig in here, um, this keeping the the hips and chest, the core region essentially forward, allows better extension in the back. Uh, the difference between his toe off point and where essentially the front of his uh, mid-region is, uh, is is quite a bit. There's quite a bit of distance there achieved uh, from toe-off uh, as he is pushing forward at the core with this position. If we look at Chris in comparison, we'll see that uh, that there isn't nearly as much extension occurring. The fact that Craig here in this power arc is keeping his uh, pelvis essentially upright and square and not hinging at forward the back and not tilting his pelvis forward uh, allows greater extension uh, through the back. And you can try this yourself. Uh, if you adopt a somewhat forward leaning at the waist posture versus a thrusting the midsection forward posture, you'll see that, that 
it's possible to extend the uh, rear foot further behind the mid-region, further behind the core region in this type of posture than is in a forward-leaning posture. It's important to remember uh, that the difference at a 90 cadence between a six-minute pace, a six-minute mile, and a seven-minute mile uh, is about eight and a half inches per stride for uh, 21 centimeters, roughly. So the difference uh, between the six and seven-minute pace you can see here uh, through this extension to get that extra eight inches per stride, uh, it's, it appears to be uh, be very possible through setting up in this uh, powerful arc posture.